Uh, and Ambassador Lighthizer, uh, thank you for coming here before the subcommittee to discuss the priorities and activities of USTR. I'm going to briefly mention two things of real interest and concern to me and then move to a home state concern and uh, tariffs and our overall trade policy. Uh, first, just on intellectual property in the Section 301 actions, um, I spent eight years as in-house counsel for a global manufacturer. Uh, we had all sorts of problems with IP theft from China. Uh, I think uh, President Trump is absolutely right to prioritize being aggressive in pushing back against China's uh, malign trade activities that have gone on for far too long, and I appreciate their being made a priority. Um, I do, however, have real concerns about the consequences of tariffs uh, being misapplied in a way that doesn't marshal our allies in a directed effort to confront China's activities, but has, I think, negative secondary consequences. Second, as a result of Brexit, uh, we have an opportunity to negotiate with the UK. Um, Senator Portman and I have created a US-UK trade caucus. Uh, we met with Liam Fox, the British Secretary of State for International Trade, with whom I believe you've also met to talk about bilateral trade relations. I just want to ask up front, um, do you support a post-Brexit U.S.-U.K. free trade deal, and do you plan to notify and engage Congress formally of your intention to begin negotiations as TPA requires? The answer is yes and yes. At Great. The, at the, I was just saying at the appropriate time. I mean, they have their own system. Right. They have their March own of next year. The yes. answer is yes and yes. I think there's preliminary conversations we can have, but this is a potential opportunity to show what a modern FTA looks like between countries um, that are having a clear-eyed talk about IP, about data, about capital flows, about a lot of different things. So I look forward to working with you on that. With you, and I look forward to work with you and, and the caucus that you sent In my home state of Delaware, um, we are all about chicken. Um, our agricultural sector is very heavily focused on poultry. Um, and soybeans and corn are the main feedstock for chickens. So soybean farmers in Delaware... Um, who are already uh, facing a disaster declaration because of both flooding and previously drought, um, have contacted me because soybean prices are at the lowest they've been in nearly a decade. Um, and I just want to tell you a, a short story about how these Section 232-based tariffs on steel, national security justified, are harming our relations and may be harming our export opportunities. Senator Isaacson of Georgia is a dear friend of mine. His state exports more chicken than any state. Sussex County, Delaware exports more chicken than any county. And we started under AGOA many years ago trying to break down barriers to the export of our chickens into the South African market. Not the world's largest market, but we're shipping now a significant quantity uh, of U.S. poultry into that market after years of effort. We had a very difficult meeting recently uh, with their trade minister. Um, they do export a very small amount of steel into the United States market. They applied for a waiver. They don't see themselves as a national security threat to the United States, much like other countries. I've also recently met with their foreign ministers, Canada, Sweden, who are wondering why these longtime trusted allies are facing steel sanctions. In the specific case of South Africa, they're going to be justified in imposing countervailing duties that may well close the door to this newly opened market for our poultry. And I started by saying I agree with you that we should be fighting China's aggressive mercantilist actions. I disagree with the strategy. In fact, I've heard colleagues, Republican and Democrats, say, where's the strategy in imposing tariffs in ways that may shut the door to critical export markets? Let me ask about the tariff strategy. As Senator Schatz, I think, memorably uh, suggested, a central planned economy like China may have more staying power than a democracy where all of us face constituencies in our home states that are increasingly upset about the impact of tariffs. I'm struck uh, that the administration is proposing to dip into $12 billion borrowed from China through a FDR era program to try and provide support uh, to farmers, and I know my soybean farmers might be interested in that. They'd rather have long-term contracts than short-term payments. But is there a plan to figure out how, I think I heard the seafood sector championed by senators from uh, Maine and Alaska. I've got manufacturers, small and medium manufacturers that make things out of steel, filing cabinets and uh, manufactured uh, steel products. Will there also be payments available for those businesses harmed by the tariffs in all sorts of sectors? And how do you make those decisions, Mr. Ambassador? Well, thank you, Senator. Um, first of all, I, I would say that the USTR has, has spends a lot of time worrying about poultry and working on poultry, as you know. Thank you. Yes. And I would also say that, that among the 
the, the, the actions of, of China that are, that are unfair to the United States is, is um, actions that they take to um, limit our exports of poultry, as well as corn and wheat and a whole variety of other issues that we can talk about, because I, uh, we tend to focus on the technology because that's where the tariffs are coming from, but the reality is they're, while they're a good agriculture market, they should be much better because they take a number of steps, and we have a number of WTO cases against them for unfair trade, unfair action. But the, the point I was making, yeah. Mr. Ambassador, yeah. was, yes, I agree with you, China, we have all sorts of problems with, but you're now making, taking the unprecedented step of providing cash payments to support those farmers harmed uh, by countervailing duties. Are you going to provide those to other sectors, and how will you decide that? Since I have folks in my state suffering from steel costs rising from other tariff issues, and how long will we sustain these tariffs? Will we sustain them for months, for years? What prospect do we have of China caving on our core trade issues with them before it collapses our vital alliances with countries like Canada or Sweden, whose foreign ministers have recently expressed directly to me uh, their sense of grievance or hurt at having been the subject of a national security-based tariff. So I apologize for giving long answers, but they seem to be questions that require long answers, so I'm sorry about that. In, in terms of how long will it take with respect to, for example, Canada in steel and aluminum, just to take that issue in, in a silo by itself. If we end up with a successful NAFTA negotiation with Canada, then as part of that, we expect there to be an agreement on steel and aluminum with respect to Canada. We don't have a, a similar process going on with respect to, to Sweden, but we do have a process which we began yesterday with respect to the European Union, and the 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 view would be that if we are successful in um, coming to a conclusion on that, that we would also solve the steel and aluminum problem with respect to the European Union. So that's kind of to answer those questions. That's more or less where we are on 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 that part of the issue. On the question of how long will it take to resolve the issue with China, my guess is candidly is gonna take longer because I think they do take a longer uh, uh, view, which by the way, I think is the right view and it's to the extent we can, we ought to be taking. I realize we have a political system that makes it difficult, but nonetheless, the reality is an awful lot of our senior politicians do take a long view, right? I mean, it's yep. not fair to say that every politician is, is um, dictated to by what, what is next election. So they really aren't. A lot of them take risks and do the right thing. So I don't know the answer to the question on China. I just know that I believe we have a strategy. I think this one that's worked. I don't think the president created the problem with China. I think it was created over a period of time by basically by benign neglect. And I think it's a situation where you have to make a change or the or the consequences are grave for the country. That's where I come from. And let me conclude, if I might, because I have one more colleague waiting to question. Mr. Ambassador, let me just summarize, if I can, your answer and the areas in which we agree and disagree. I absolutely agree. We should be taking aggressive action against China to defend America's inventions and innovations and in IP and to make sure that we've got fair market access, particularly for the chickens of Delaware and many other states. But by slapping tariffs all over the world on other countries that are not directly engaged in this, we reduce the number of our allies who are working with us against China's malign actions, and we grow the number of trade disputes and problems we have. The example of South Africa possibly closing off soon our poultry export access to their market, something that's not even on your menu, strikes me as one of a dozen unintended consequences of a misguided policy that instead of marshalling our allies to focus on challenging China, has instead stirred up a hornet's nest of problems in other parts of the world with trusted allies. And my concern, sir, is that I agree with you, China's taking the long view and so should we. If our strategy is to pay more and more and more directly from the federal government to farmers and maybe fishermen and maybe manufacturers, we are gradually moving from a market economy to one where we are borrowing tens of billions of dollars from China to pay 
those sectors in the United States that suffer as we try and see who will blink first. I'm concerned that's not a sustainable strategy. Senator Coons, thank, thank you. you.